My name is Alex Dorge and I'm an Ansible specialist, and I'm going to be walking through Ansible and Insights Image Builder to talk about how those tools can work together. I'm also going to give a shout out to Eric Noten, who did a lot of the work, and I use a lot of his repository, so I'm going to include in the description down below his LinkedIn profile, as well as his original repository before I made some of the changes that I did. So what is Insights Image Builder and what's the benefit of it? So it's all hosted in console.redhat.com and provides a cloud-hosted way to build RHEL virtual machines. So I don't need to have anything set up in my on-premise environment. I can just leverage the API or UI to really do the entire configuration of my Red Hat Enterprise Linux virtual machine. So whether it's configuring file systems, creating your initial user, setting that disk size, some base packages, essentially this is your way to help set up your golden image that I can use, whether it's Red Hat Enterprise Linux 8, 9, the 10 beta, it gives you all of that flexibility as you go through your creation process. Because personally, I obviously like to use Ansible. I've automated the process using that Image Builder API. The nice thing is the API also has additional capability that you can't find within the UI. So that user creation capability actually doesn't exist in the UI. So it allows me to do that full definition as code. So codifying the process always makes it easier for auditability. And then also makes it easier for me once RHEL 10 becomes officially GA'd, I can just modify, add that additional capability in, and I'm off and running. But I've also added the ability for me to upload to my hypervisor, in my case, vCenter, so I can do that as part of my creation process, so I can have a full end-to-end -end creation uploading, so I have ready-to-go golden image templates inside my hypervisor, and you can certainly extend this to your cloud platforms like Azure or AWS based on where your business lies. So let's jump into a demonstration showing this capability as well as showing some of that code. So let's jump into the demonstration itself. So as you can see, I'm logged into console.redhat.com and I've gone to the Insights Image Builder section. Well, you'll notice right now it says no images. I'm gonna refresh this because I did a build prior to this. And you'll see that I do have two images that have been built that are good for six hours. The nice thing about this is I don't need to create a blueprint for consistent builds because I've already defined all of this as code. So in my automation platform, I have two jobs, one for actually doing that build and download and one for doing the cleanup. So obviously, since these are only good for six hours anyway, I don't need to maintain them. I don't need to download the OVA because I'm handling that as part of my automation process. So I have previously done that build as I talked about. So it took about 19 minutes, which is why I didn't want to have that uh, as part of the demonstration. But as you can see, Essentially what I'm doing is checking to see if an Im the image already exists. For my case, I'm doing this as an immutable image, but I just kept this as part of the process. If you decide you wanna store this on an NFS share or something like that, which is why it says false for me. And then it goes to the process of getting a refresh token. So in the uh, API for uh, console.redout.com, you get a token that's good for 30 days. Obviously if I continue to use it, it will continue to stay valid but I get a refresh token that's good for 15 minutes to actually do the API calls. So you'll notice a couple times that I do that refresh token just to keep it valid. Uh, then I actually do the request, the creation of the images, which starts that build process in the background. I get the composes to get their actual IDs so I can get the status. And then the longest part is actually going through verifying that the compose request is finished. This takes about 15 minutes, give or take. Um, and you'll notice that there is a failure farther down in here because that refresh token does expire. So the logic has been built into the role itself to redo that refresh. And then once again, verify that the compose is finished. So all that's handled. So it doesn't understand that this may time out. I may just need to regenerate that refresh token and then check again that the build is complete. I then download the images into a temp folder in the execution environment. I'm leveraging ephemeral storage. So I don't have any storage backend tied to this, which works for my particular use case. And then I go through the process of uploading it to VMware. So I'm using that OVA to push it into VMware. I'm upgrading the hardware version and assigning the guest ID, so making sure it's a RHEL 8 or RHEL 9 VM. And the reason why I'm upgrading the hardware version is it defaults to a pretty old version that doesn't even recognize RHEL 9 as a guest ID option. So I make sure that's done. Then I also assign a network to the VM. So when I first boot it up from a template, it'll be ready to go. And then I am converting it to a template. So let's look at the actual code that goes into this process. Because this is all ephemeral, I made this a single playbook and calls multiple roles as it goes through this process. So I talked about that check image, which I'll show in a second. 
then it goes to that process of the refresh token, actually requesting the creation of the images via the API, doing that refresh again, getting all the composers that are there, verifying that they're finished. So that's what that loop was to check every X number of seconds to see if the compose is finished, then the download and upload to vCenter. So in the role itself, I basically created group files with my image definitions. So I've got a couple packages that I install because these are part of every single rel image that I use. So I'm leveraging IDM. I want to have yum util so I can see if a reboot is required. And I want firewall D installed and enabled, which you can see in this process. So I've actually gone through defining, you know, rel nine distribution. This I'm using as the ID uh, in vCenter when I'm doing that update after I do the hardware upgrade. I'm creating a vSphere OVA. This for you change it to be AWS or Azure or GCP if you're using those pieces. And then I've got those customizations for that package list, creating my user. So this is my automation user. So I'll be ready to go out of the box. I'm enabling the firewall D service and ensuring that SSH is enabled for firewall D as well. And then I'm doing the same thing for rel eight. So I've got a carbon copy rel eight and rel nine. I'll do the same thing once rel 10 is available as well. So for the check image process, just simply checking my storage directory that I've defined in my role, just looking in slash temp to see if they exist. And then I go through that token refresh process. So again, these are all stored in the role definition for that SSO endpoint, but I'm basically using my offline token to get that uh, token. Then I'm going through the image request process. So if you notice, this is basically using everything from that image definition that I showed before. The only thing that I've hard coded in is the size. So this is how many uh, gigabytes the disk itself will be because Jinja doesn't necessarily like, like to do things nicely with an integer and this requires an integer value. I did specifically hard code this in there, but for me, this would be a 50 gigabyte disk, but everything else is using variables that are set in that image definition. So again, it gives me that pretty easy capability to do this at scale as many as I want. After the image creation is done, I then get those composes. So I hit that compose endpoint to get the actual uh, compose ID. Then I go through that verify compose step. So this is where it's essentially looping through to see if the compose request is finished. So it's in a finished status, not failed or skipped. And I've added in that rescue if I get that failure. So the failure specifically is if that refresh token expires after its 15 minute limit, it does do that renew and then verify that the compose itself is finished. So it handles that full process. Once the compose is done, obviously I want to download that image. So this is done asynchronously to speed up that process because I can download both images at the same time. And then once that's done, I deploy to VMware. For me personally, if I'm using templates, I want to clear out the old template first. So I'm doing that process and then uploading as a new uh, OVA. So I don't want it to be powered on. So I want to do some of my pre-configuration steps. I am updating the hardware version to version 20 and updating that guest ID. So it knows that it's a rel eight VM or a rel nine VM. I'm adding my particular network to it and then I'm converting it to a template. So that entire process now goes from absolutely nothing in vCenter to a fully baked image with the correct size. So I'm gonna convert this temporarily to a virtual machine so you can see. But you'll see that it is a 50 gigabyte disc and it conveniently is set up with the appropriate hardware. So this is just the default two and four, it's a 50 gigabyte disc. And if I go to VM options, you'll see that it is a rel eight guest OS. So I'm doing that as part of that definition. So all of my automation works, which relies on the guest ID that I get from vCenter itself. Once I'm done, because as you can see, these images will kind of linger here. Eventually they'll expire, but they'll still stay. I also have a playbook for cleaning up the composes. So this leverages that same definition I had before to delete them so they don't hang around the, the, uh, the system itself. So the nice part about this is I could actually tie this to the end of my playbook and do this cleanup. So I can do the build, push them, create them as templates, clean out the old images, and everything can be done. And because this is all done in the automation platform, if I wanted to, I could schedule this job to run once a month, once a week, or if a you know, CVE that Red Hat has detected has been corrected, I can just rebuild all my golden image templates. So I'm all, always building off the latest and greatest. So it's a much easier process than things that I've done in the past with the rel image builder, 
because you have to obviously have a rel system set up. You need to make sure our cockpit is enabled. You need to make sure image builder itself is installed. I don't need any of that for this process to work. And because everything that I'm doing is running on local host, nothing needs to have additional storage set up or anything like that. So this is a fairly simplified process to a full end to end image build to push and create my templates inside vSphere. If you leverage the content library, you just change your steps inside this uh, deploy to VMware. So instead of converting it to template, you may push it to the content library to be available for your end users. But this really does that full end to end process. As I talked about before, I did leverage a lot of this from the work Eric has done. Eric specifically did this with OpenStack. So if you have questions, you leverage OpenStack, you can leverage his repository that again is in that description down below. So to close things out, uh, I'll include again in the description down below all the things for Eric as well as my repository. I'm also going to include that link directly to image builder inside console.reddit.com as well as the API documentation. There are a lot more capabilities that exist in the API than that exist through the UI. So I highly recommend looking through that API documentation to see all the different file systems that you can create, the sizes, the users, and everything else. And then obviously you could update that particular compose request to handle exactly how you want your process to look. So it does give you a ton of options as you go through this process. Really the longest part of this playbook is the actual build itself which makes sense because I'm building an entire image or images based on how many that you've defined within your variables. Thank you for taking the time to learn a little bit more about how Ansible and Insights Image Builder can work together. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of how I can create an image pipeline or a golden image pipeline leveraging Ansible and Insights together. Click my picture on the right to subscribe or click the image on the left to watch another video.